Hey everybody, at BV Matson here, stripping down the Jeep Wrangler from 1994 to do a paint job. And that means I gotta strip down these steel doors. The goal is to get these stripped down so I can sand and paint, so that means the handles gotta come off and the locks gotta come off. Also, all the weather stripping and the interior handles and all that good stuff. You'd think it'd be easy, but it's a little bit of a process. It's going to be easiest to start with the window rolled down. This first seal should just pull all the way out across the top. Once you get down below the window, you're going to run into some little hooks. Just pull on that thing a little bit and these are going to pop right off. They're little, little hooks. Take a look at them. Just like that. Go ahead and just kind of tug and pull gently because you don't want to tear the little holes, right? Because there's little holes in here that you need to get at and you don't want to wreck those so gently start to coerce those loose eventually you'll have the whole thing in your hand there are also a couple seals on the lower edge of the window simply grab them firmly and kind of jiggle those loose it can be kind of tight but once you get it it'll pop right out there's going to be two of those and you're just going to kind of give these a little tug You'll see you're basically just loosening these from some little slots. Next up, we need to get this door panel off. You're gonna need a little torque set in order to get these screws that hold the handle down. You're gonna wanna take both of those off. With that handle removed, you can pop off the little cover on the, on the crank. Go ahead and pull those off. We'll get the crank off next. Just like that. Keep your crank handy though. You're gonna need it. Well, we got the Torx in our hand, we might as well get rid of the uh, door stop right here. It's just two bolts, easy peasy. This will pop right off as well. Now we're ready to pop off the door panel. And there's going to be just some pressure fittings all the way around. Work your way around and start popping this thing loose. And once you find them all, you should be able to just lift the cover right off. And if you lost a couple of these along the way, don't freak out, it's an easy fix. Next up, we gotta get this cover off. Bunch of Phillips screws right here, and then there's gonna be some Torx down here. These are gonna be a T27. Be careful with these though, you can cross thread them, and you can strip out the heads on these real easy. Ask me how I know. All right, now we can remove the cover. This reveals all kinds of fun stuff. Next up, we gotta get this door handle off. Just reach down in here and take that bolt out. Next up, and don't forget this, be sure to roll your window all the way up. I wanna do a nice thorough job of painting this, so this chrome strip that holds that inner cover in, that needs to come out. That is just riveted in on this one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drill those out. Slow and steady, wind three. And that's why you roll your window up. Now we get to start having some fun. We're gonna identify these two rods. These actually run all the way over to the door handle. We need to get these disconnected. So there we go, we're gonna follow these in. We've got these two that we need to disconnect. There's two different styles of these. On this one, you're just gonna push the plastic piece out and lift that rod up. Right here, I'm just gonna push it out and I'm gonna lift that rod up. Let's take a look at that other variation. Some of you may run across some that look like this, like they're just like little metal pieces and the ends of your rods aren't gonna be bent. They're gonna be kind of serrated a little bit. You're just gonna pull those straight up. They should pop out. With these disconnected, you're gonna be able to lift up your handle and just pull this thing straight back. While it's all still connected, I kind of like to tape these together. These can be a little discombobulating um, if they get separated and stuff. So I like to tape these together and then go ahead and write which side of the vehicle they came off of. Next up, let's get our lockout. And I want to show you kind of how this actually works. What it is, it's locked in, it's out on the outside of the door. And then underneath, there's like this little shim that slides into a slot on your lock. And that's essentially what's holding it. It's, it's like this kind of in your door. So to get that lock out, you need to jam or punch this little sliding piece out. It actually goes up in there. 
like something like, yeah, something just like that. But you're gonna wanna hit it from the inside of the door. From inside there, you're gonna be hitting this to loosen that up so the lock falls out. Before you can do that, just go ahead and do the same thing. Unlock the uh, little bar that goes to your lock and lift that up. There's one other piece that we need to get off and it's actually one of these little clips, one of these, okay? You're gonna need to grab that. It's right around the end of the, uh, kind of the pin on the lock. You gotta get that off. Best way that I've found is just get like a really narrow flat screwdriver and then work your way in there, get some leverage and pop that thing off to the side. If you got a magnetic one, that can really help too because you don't wanna lose that little connector piece. So there you can see I popped mine off and sure enough, it fell down in the bottom. You're gonna have to get a magnet. Once you get the clip off, you can just kind of pull this whole assembly rod out and put that to the side. It's really tough to see, but you can see around the lock on the lower edge right down there, that's where I'm gonna be hitting. So I'm gonna be hitting down, trying to slide that off the lock. This is gonna be almost impossible to show you, but what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna take a long flat screwdriver, this is a really long one, and I'm gonna slide it down along that ridge, get a little angle to it, it's tight, and just drive that out. I'm gonna be honest with you, getting these out the first time, this can be a real bugger, a bear cat, a new once. I don't know, man, it's everything. This thing blew my mind the first time. Once you get that out though, that lock should fall straight out the bottom. Now we're moving on to get this door handle out, and I'm telling you, this sucks. I hate this, this is miserable. What you gotta do first is get down underneath here, and there's gonna be a little R-clip. Go ahead and pull that. Here's a good look at that R-clip, just a Phillips screwdriver flathead screwdriver, whatever. Just gonna pull that, pop it out. Having a magnetic one's really nice because it comes right out. You need this, get that off of there. From there, you can go ahead and lift this rod up. Might be a little stuck, might have to pry it off a little bit, but now it is disconnected from the door handle. All right, so before we get into how or getting this out, I wanna show you how this works. So there's this little clip. You don't wanna break these, you don't wanna bend these, all right? But they slide on the door handle just like that. And then what actually holds the door in is that you put the handle in, the sheet metal on the door is here. And then what we're doing is we're sliding a wedge through and this little piece here is gonna go click, 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 click until it gets really, really tight. Now to get it off, putting it on isn't so bad, but getting it off can be a real bear cat. What you need to do is you end up driving, let me actually get this off of here. So you got this little piece here, we're gonna take that off. To get it off, you're gonna actually drive this whole thing through the door handle. So you need to get behind it with like a punch and drive it through, and then once it falls off, you're gold. One other cautionary tale before you start removing these, make sure your window is all the way up. I actually broke one of my windows on a previous set of doors because it was just slightly down and I nicked it and the thing shattered. All right, I'm just gonna grab my long handled screwdriver. I'm gonna get this nice and square on the back side. And I'm just gonna start tapping this. See it kind of move forward. I'm just gonna keep hitting it. And just watch and make sure you're not making contact with anything. That one actually popped out really nice. It's almost completely free right now. Once you get it forward a ways, if it doesn't fall out, don't worry about it. Just leave it there for now. And then turn your attention to this one over here. This one is a booger. This one's a little trickier, the inside one, because it's the, you don't really have a nice right angle at it. You can't get at it really super straight. So it's a little kitty wumpus, but again, same thing. Once you've gotten both of those um, all the way forward, what you can do then is um, get your window coming back down. Shouldn't be that big of a problem to do. There we go. Just had one of the rods in the way there. Glad I noticed that. That could have been a problem but I'm just gonna pull this window down as far as I can get it. 
And now we can attack these from the top. So this is gonna be really hard for me to show you, but if you look down through the top, there you can see that bugger. You can grab that with a needle nose and start pulling it forward. Then you can move over to the other side too. They're both kind of snaked in there. Just be really careful of your window. Grab them and start pulling them forward. Eventually, they're gonna come loose. All right, I'm just gonna kind of get in here, reach back and pull it, and there you go. That one just fell over, it's hanging out there. If you got a little angled set of needle nose, it really kind of helps alleviate some of that pressure. I'm just gonna try to pull that forward. So I'm really struggling with this one. So one thing you can do is get underneath of this part and pry that up a little bit. Make sure you're getting all the pressure off of that piece. You can bend it back later on. I wish I would have caught it on film, but as soon as you get them both out, your handle's gonna fall on the floor. So I need to sand and paint and all this stuff, and I don't wanna paint over all of my new weather strip. So what I wanna do is I wanna actually pull this stuff out. The best place to start for this one is up at your corner window. Get a screwdriver in there, get underneath it, and lift it out. You don't wanna tear it up. You'll get underneath it, pull that up. Once you get it started, you can start to work this whole thing right out. Now I'm not going all the way with this, all right? I'm just pulling this out to this point. And then what I'm gonna do, because this thing actually goes all the way down into the door, what I'm actually gonna do is just tuck it into the door for now, get it out of the way of paint. So I'm just gonna take the end of it and I'm just gonna start pushing it down inside the door. I can go retrieve it later. The window is gonna stay down while I paint anyway. And then that way, I don't have to try and wrestle with getting it back in there. It's just gonna be here hanging out nice and protected from any overspray. That's really about as far as I need to go. Um, you could take out the, the corner window here if you wanted to, but I'm actually just gonna, these are in really good shape, I don't need to. So I just pulled all the molding back and then I'll tape this all up, I'll bind this all up really good and keep that out of the way of paint. It's gonna be fine. So there you go. This is ready for sanding and paint on the inside. The exterior is ready for paint too. The Jeep engineers make us work for this. One thing I'll also say is that if your steel doors are already fitted to your Jeep, I would highly encourage you to just leave these hinges where they are because aligning and fitting those steel doors was an absolute nightmare. Just leave them alone, paint over them. Also, be sure to bag and tag your parts. Everything on here is pretty much right, left specific. So do yourself a favor and bag and tag. This is gonna be a big project, sanding this down, getting this all ready for paint. But I think it's gonna be a really fun adventure. Now that the doors are all stripped down, that's probably where I'm gonna start. I hope you found the video useful. If so, be sure to subscribe. Also, head on over to keeponwrenching.com. Get yourself a free sticker. You deserve it, you made it this far. And also, go find us on Facebook, the Keep On Wrenching Community Group. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next video or live stream.